Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, getting ready for Red Raider tip-off as Wyoming fits the description of the next potential victim. And we break out the tinfoil Stetson and consider life in the Rig 12. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you. And uh, we find ourselves back on another game day as uh, we're switching gears to kick off today's conversation as. The Red Raiders, Grant McCaslin and company back on the floor and uh, back at it from United Supermarkets Arena. Seems like Texas Tech maybe with uh, a few more wins stacked up, maybe just one tonight. Um, starting to get on a radar a little bit just outside of that top 25 category as far as some official ratings are concerned, but uh, right there. And you want to continue to establish some early season momentum. And uh, this matchup and how it came to be, I guess, with an added layer of interest given some of the offseason moves, right? Yeah, so so tonight, uh, you know, the Red Raiders will obviously take on Wyoming, uh, coached by Sundance Wicks. Um, Beautiful name. S- s- I agree, mm-hmm. and um, th- there's uh, you know Texas Tech put out, puts out these like you know behind the scenes videos about their basketball program. They're about ten or eleven minutes. Uh, I've watched some of them. They do a great job internally with some of that, but I've watched the version of that from Wyoming. And uh, that's posted on Wyoming site uh, in preparation for broadcasting this thing tonight. And uh, Sundance Wicks is like he is about as passionate of a dude as you'll find. And he's really the head coach at Wyoming because of Jeff Linder, who is now on your staff. And to your point, the reason that this game is being played is because Jeff Linder is at Texas Tech. Uh, I don't remember if it's like either two games or three games but this is essentially what um, I think there was some money owed to Wyoming because of Jeff Linder's contract and some things like that, like a contract buyout. And I think what Wyoming, the administration wanted to do was like, hey, how about you? you we, we work a deal to where we play you uh, for I, I, it's multiple times, uh, but I don't know if it's two or three. Um, and, and that's, you know, and there's money that exchanges hands on, like when you come to play and it's a guarantee and all that stuff. But I, I think that they were, Wyoming was trying to get better games. And obviously if you're Texas tech, you're going, man, as long as we don't have to travel to Laramie, I guess we're okay with it. Sure. <laughs> Cause while, I mean, Wyoming's a, that, you know, coach Linder took him to the NCAA tournament in, I want to say 2021, uh, they had a 20 plus win season, so not too far removed from NCAA's. But uh, I mean, they're they're going to be much better than than what a lot of the teams you're you've got rolling into the arena. And uh, but that's kind of how this thing got put together. It'll clearly be the best team that you've played uh, th- through three games or through two games, I guess, uh, to this point this year after uh, Bethune Cookman and Northwestern State come in. But uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I mean, they'll they'll look the part, um, and they're going to play, which is interesting. Coach Wicks is there, you know, if you look at their rotation and some of their previous games, they're going to play, you know, multiple bigs, which is not necessarily what people are doing these days. Uh, And they're going to play multiple big men most of the game, you know, so uh, that is not something you necessarily see, especially in the non-conference. But uh, so, you know, it'll be, it'd be a fun test, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot going on here on why this game will be played tonight at the arena. Um, a couple more left from United Supermarkets Arena before you uh, hit the road. Um, so take advantage of that out there. And I I guess I'm still looking ahead with expectations that we're going to see uh, sort of a, a driverless offense. There's been a man at the wheel, but we've been sans point guards to this point in the season. Chris, do you have an early feel for maybe what we could expect next time around? Well, you know, and, and Grant had said last week, you know, he, he felt like if these were big 12 games – he felt like both of his guys would be playing. Uh, I think his comment was we could push them through and and I don't know what percentage we'd be at, but we're trying to get them to where they're a hundred percent or they're 90% and we don't have any kind of setback. Um, The flip side of that is uh, I, I, I think you may see one of the two tonight. I don't know who that would be, 
I think when Grant met with the media yesterday, he basically said, still don't know where those guys are at. We'll just kind of have to see. Um, but I, 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 I certainly hope for Texas Tech stand, you know, situation that that you have more than seven guys that you feel comfortable with uh, going at it tonight. Uh, and then, and then the challenge becomes because yeah, you're you're looking at. Um, I guess it's a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow, you're playing St. Joe's on national television, and then the very next night, you're either playing Syracuse or Texas. Yeah, and those games are important uh, because you've got uh, you've got Wyoming at night, you've got Arkansas Pine Bluff on uh, on Monday, and they're not very good at all. Uh, so this is so any new piece that you introduce into the rotation. You, you want some time for that to marinate a bit and some time for, you know, to get, get used to it and, and, and get some rotations going and kind of get some of that under your belt before you go to the Barclays Center uh, up in Brooklyn. Yeah, and I, you know, I guess in some ways you might consider this could uh, benefit a team, not that you draw it up this way, but do you learn something new about yourself or maybe some guys find out some things about themselves by being put in an uncomfortable position? Uh, without your planned point guards, I guess, if you make the most out of it. But um, either way, you'll have some serious basketball, with all due respect to the previous opponents uh, and Wyoming. You'll have some serious basketball coming up uh, soon enough. So you also want to get some of those things in motion as far as what you did plan it to look like, and especially when we're talking about newcomers. So kind of something we've become accustomed to, I guess, in the world of college basketball and may soon enough with college football as well, the early portion of the season where you really, as Coach McCaslin described it, have to kind of take a journey to find out who you are because you're usually trying to bring so many uh, new faces together in, in a short amount of time. The, the non-conference really for both the sports that we talk so much about on this show uh, is crucial just because there's so much new every year. Uh, and and you are, you're trying to figure out identity. You're trying to figure out chemistry and all the stuff for basketball. Uh, I think that luckily you've got, unselfish players and i think you've got some guys that are not gonna they're not gonna look over at elijah hawkins and christian anderson and go oh man well i'm, I'm only getting this many shots now or i'm gonna get this many minutes now it, it, like how they're doing it right now is not a way to go through the big 12 conference you can't do it or, or you can't do it well i should say you can't you can't look at Chance McMillan and Kerwin Walton and Darion Williams and go give me thirty eight minutes a night or you're just going to run out of gas. They're they're you know, I mean the the Travis Hunter what he's doing on the football field is just simply otherworldly and I and, and in the Big Twelve as physical as it, as it is and it's two games a week and, and all that you just can't, you've got to be able to back off some of these guys. But this is what you're doing now. But I think that uh, you know because I think Grant was asked yesterday about. Darian Williams and he's averaging like 10 and a half assists a game, which is nuts. Like would his role change much when, when you do in, incorporate, you know, a, a, or, or more point guards into the picture. And, and I think Grant said, you know, his role won't change a bunch. They're still going to utilize him to facilitate on the block or on the wing and some things like that. What I do think though, is you could basically see his rebounding numbers go up a bit. So I think his role would change slightly, because you'll you'll lighten the load of him having to incorporate and facilitate and getting other guys involved. Is somebody else can sh- uh, you know bear that uh, uh, bear that burden. Uh, so anyway, it, but as far as but I, I would like to see some of this before you 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 know you play some of these tougher opponents because I just think it would it would benefit you greatly to have some of this under your belt. Uh, you know, as opposed to just debuting it all when you get to the Barclays Center because those those games are. Those are going to be huge RPI type opportunities, and and you don't want to let those slip up because you only have so many of them in the non conference. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, happens on the floor tonight, and of course, getting another one under your belt uh, as we get to some of what could be some really interesting non conference actions. So, uh, also been looking ahead. You know, I'm not in the locker room, so hopefully, I'm not hurting the team by looking ahead. But I'm doing some looking ahead uh, <laughs> at what's uh, coming up just around the corner. Chris uh, wanted to hop on over back across the stream into the land. Uh, of an oblong ball, that being football, uh, if we could now, because I wanted to get back to some conversation that uh, I know has been out there among the fan base, uh, and we've been hearing from a lot of them this week following the most recent episode of Texas Tech football on Saturday where they fall to Colorado. Uh, talking about this with Matador Mobsters just this morning. 
uh, as a matter of fact. And that is not only, I guess, the bigger picture future of Joey McGuire's quarterback situation, but possibly even the immediate. First, today's episode brought to you by Roy, and it's time to highlight the LOTT Roy Player of the Week. Roy's a brand new platform that lets fans make contributions directly to their favorite athletes. So download Roy for iOS or Android and enter our referral code locked on, and you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. This week, who else could it be? It's Taj Brooks, now Texas Tech's all time rushing leader after surpassing Byron Hanspard for number one on the list. So for that, we're kicking Taj $100 on Roy. If you were as impressed as we were with his performance on Saturday, you can show him some love too. Just hop on Roy and throw in whatever you feel like. Any amount adds up fast, and now you have the chance to show your appreciation for Taj and his performance last week. Just download Roy for iOS or Android and use our referral code Locked On, and you're going to automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. So what are you waiting for? Get off the sidelines and into the NIL game with Roy. That is not only, I guess, the bigger picture future of Joey McGuire's quarterback situation, but possibly even the immediate. It seems like some are in a tinkering mood now that maybe you've exited a uh, conference title race. And so you look at the rest of the season, which I'm in a winning mode. Like, let's just do whatever you need to do to get a win. But some think this tinkering could also be a part of that. Um, I don't know if you've, you've kind of picked up on that same thing or identify with that frame of mind as we get down to the final two weeks and we got an open week uh, even ahead of that. But specifically with the quarterback position, I wanted to get into you maybe you know some of that uh, for the next two weeks, but also how you feel like the events of this year have impacted the QB competition, QB future, QB position, maybe looking ahead even to 2025. Because once again, uh, sort of an interesting path. And this isn't an – I'd say fairly healthy season for your starting QB, but you got that one glimpse. You got that one glimpse in Fort Worth of a guy that looked pretty promising also. And man, that's kind of hard to let go of and forget, uh, I think, as a fan. Certainly speaking for myself, forgetting what Will Hammond looked like. So what do you make of that story and uh, maybe how these final two weeks are utilized and looking ahead even into uh, next season? Yeah, well, uh, the backup QB man. It's always the it's always our favorite the player. always the savior. Yeah, he's always the one that. Uh, yeah, it's always the one that's gonna <laughs> fix everything that ails you. <laughs> so this is a, and, and I've gotten the same questions about you know Will Hammond and, and other other folks, and and I think that there's there's this is a multi layered kind of conversation to have. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, you, you have to do right by seniors on your team. And what I mean by that is you, you, you're trying to win game number seven and eight, and you're trying to go to the best bowl game possible. Yeah. I, I get the sentiment from folks out there that are like, it doesn't matter. Some meaningless bowl game doesn't this or that. Again, you are still in the mode of trying to push your program forward and like create momentum and all the things. And people may go, ah, that doesn't really matter or that's not a real thing or whatever they're not going to go about this other than trying to win at Oklahoma state and coming home and, and beating West Virginia at home. That's so as long as we make that clear yeah. now, having said that, if, um, you, you know, would you be a little bit more, uh, you know, would it be a little bit more palatable for, from a scheme or coaching standpoint to go, let's, let's incorporate some of, some of our younger players or be a little bit more, um, open to the idea of, of working some more of the, of the youth into it. Uh, I think sure. Um, but not at the cost of winning the game. And that's where the rub is. If, if you, cause now you're into the window where most, uh, there's some guys, but the, but most of your freshmen, like Micah Hudson wouldn't apply here, but most of your guys, they can now play in these two games and still maintain their red shirt, including a guy like Will Hammond. Um, and, and so I, you know, could you see more of, you know, Jacoby Williams is already, you know, you know, and, and Cam Dickey, the, those, those guys have already exhausted it and all that, but, you know, we were talking about this with Taj, I think in yesterday's show, you know, now that he's gotten the record and maybe, you know, maybe it's time to, I hate to use the word force, but like, like really intentionally, 
give Jacoby Williams or Cam Dickey more workload. Again, not at the expense of winning. That's the that's the rub. Uh, and yeah. I'm going to continue to say that because it, it's easy to go, ah, just turn the page, play all the young guys. It, this stuff doesn't matter. But it, it does. <laughs> You you can't <laughs> fans perspective, you, you yeah. can't tell me that it if I give you the choice like are you willing to just play all the young players and then go lose at, at, at Oklahoma State nobody I just oh, don't know of anybody that's going to say that um, <laughs> I'm certainly not comfortable with that I want to win um, there is no improving your drafts you know pick or anything going on here <laughs> you know yeah. um, so. Having said all that, though, I I do think that you you know maybe there's there's a some space for maybe some of your younger defensive linemen, uh, you know that th- that's the part where this bye week comes an interesting time is like you can maybe prepare some of these folks to like okay, we're gonna start working you into the mix a little bit. Maybe you'll get you know a handful of snaps, and whereas before it's like we well, don't even want to dress them out because we don't want to play them, we don't want to burn their eligibility. Will Hammond certainly did not want to be a part of losing this year, but see that that is yeah. now gone. He can now play in these two games and still maintain it, and he can still play in the bowl game. It doesn't affect it. Um, and if you were to have made the title, the Big 12 title game or the playoffs or whatever, those games don't count either. It's four regular season games. He's played in two of these. So um, we'll just kind of see where where what that looks like and how that goes. Um as far as QB big picture, you know, Zach Kitley, this is the – Will Hammond's the first quarterback that uh, that he recruited. Um, he was specifically went out, and that's his guy. And Will Hammond came here to play for Zach Kitley. Uh, and and the future is bright. I don't disagree with you at all. I think Will's different, uh, I think, in a good way. I think he's wired. Um, he's, he's very mature for his age, and he prepares very – he hadn't taken this year off, you know. I mean, he he's passed people on the depth chart. I mean, all the stuff. Um, what it what it means for like a Cam Brown and a Jake Strong, like in the future, I'm not real sure where all that plays out. But I think you've got two guys you feel very comfortable with, and I think it's fair to say you'll have a QB competition in the off season. I don't have a problem with saying that at all. I don't think it's. Uh, Is that a surprise to you as the season has developed, or? Not really, um, not really, and we'll see. We'll see how healthy everybody is, including Barron. Um, you know, yeah. after the season is over, because there's things that go on with a lot of these guys, and you know, there's always there's always players that you're just like, "Hey, I didn't know he needed surgery, or I didn't know he was playing through that, or he's going to miss the spring, or whatever." And you know, we'll just kind of see what all that looks like. Uh, there, there's some chatter that they are trying to recruit uh a second quarterback in this class uh because i think there's an injury to um their current quarterback commitment uh, who is an early enrollee um or scheduled to be an early enrollee so there's just a lot going on here with this spot um but uh you know i'm I'm pretty sure about will hammond how about that uh but again i'm getting caught up into the backup qb thing uh just like everybody else uh, but I still think Barron has done a good job. I think it hasn't been perfect. I think, think there's, there's frustration internally with what he's been. I, uh, I, I just kind of a angst thing. Among well, us? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's not been perfect internally. But I think that you're going to agree with me here. He hadn't had a lot of time sometimes either. No, you know, when people are like, throw it down the field more. Well, if you had more time, maybe, maybe you could get to that. But it, it's just depending on the matchup, it's uh, but I mean, I, I think he's been um, I think he's been good. Has he been great? No, um, I get bugged when he's not talked about whenever you start listing off the top five or six quarterbacks and he's not even mentioned them. And that, that part bothers me a bit because I don't necessarily agree with that. I think he belongs in that conversation. Um, he's won more than he's lost. Uh, I think that, um, his numbers aren't overwhelming, but I mean, you go look at his numbers. It's crazy is his numbers aren't that far off from what, uh, what, what Shadour Sanders is are. They're not that much different. Um, but yet one's a first overall pick potentially. And the other one is like a, an afterthought. Um, you know, I think you, I'm look. what, what the reason I like a guy like Will is I think that that added component with his legs changes the dynamic a bit with the way you can play offense. 
Um, and I think that's a bit different than, than Baron. But again, I'm glad they're both set, scheduled to be here, you know, for the rest of this year and the next year. Uh, obviously, as Baron's got one more year of eligibility, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and, and like you, you're really not going to go be able to get anybody in the portal at this spot uh, because because of Baron and Will, right? I mean, they're going to go, okay, well, I'm not playing there. So, so you, you're, you're, you're going at this from what you've got on your roster or what freshman you're recruiting. This is kind of the group, unless there's some wild curveball that we can't envision. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of talking in circles now, but I think you kind of get the idea. I'm just trying to give you a big picture of, of kind of what the thought is on, on the QB thing in my mind anyway. Sure. I, I think the, at least the way I perceived it, the off season that will follow this, uh, this year and the, competition that would or wouldn't have been there um has gotten a little more interesting than maybe i anticipated maybe i i don't know had high too high of expectations for baron morton maybe too low of expectations for will hammond given i hadn't obviously seen him on this level and we hadn't seen much of anything of him on this level even with a half played but again backup qb is always our favorite spot um but i have a hard time i mean i really don't find myself all that frustrated with baron maybe i'm missing some things that some other um, you know, quarterback whispers are, are seeing or something like that. But I think he's obviously, for the most part, led a winning effort. He's got a chance to be a quarterback for a seven and five or eight and four football team. And yet I, I hear so much about, uh, you know, making changes or again, back to that like tinkering frame of mind over the last couple of weeks. And it's kind of hard for me to think about, um, you know, taking snaps away from a QB that's been a part of a season like that and had the year he has. It's not like they're surviving Baron Morton, you know, week two. it's not one of those situations where. He's the weak link at all, and uh, I think for the most part, um, he's done what you've asked him to do. He's made some plays, and he's avoided the really bad ones. Uh, obviously, I just—I'll say this: I just don't know. That's why I mentioned like the health thing and passing. I, uh, you know, when he got shut down in the spring, I, I just—I—I I wonder how good he feels. Only he knows that. I don't. I don't. I don't ask those questions, and like I've never asked him that. Um, and and you know we've never gotten into that with Joey on his coach's show or anything like that. I, I mean, because I think that he's playing. He he seems to be fine. But the reason I say that is is because there's some of the deeper throws that he's a bit inaccurate on that I think he used to be really really good at uh, that that are here or there. There there's some there's some a few things that I it it gives me pause. To wonder, like, man, is 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 everything a hundred percent? You know, because um, he's taking some hits. I mean, we thought he, you know, thought he broke a collarbone two two or three weeks ago, whatever it was, and that's a non-throwing. But I just wonder how good everything is and how he feels, and just you know, um, once the season concludes, or once you get to the point where there is no more ball to play, you know, that's when you typically hear about that kind of stuff. Uh, but. Uh, I just I just say that in passing. That's what I wonder, because I do have a high um, opinion of Barron, and I've seen what he can do and what he's done before. But that's why there's there's a few things. Just sometimes the, the, the slight inaccuracy on some of the deeper throws, uh, but he still can zip it on occasion too. But I know this when Will Hammond was turning it loose, it it it, it he had a lot of spin on it. Um, it comes out hot. <clears throat> um, but I, I think, I think Barron's been hit quite a bit in recent weeks. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see, um, you know, all that, all that'll get played out over the next, you know, month to, to two months and, and all those things. But it, it's, it's an interesting conversation because I think there's a lot of moving parts as it relates to just that position, but back to the original point, there's a lot of moving parts with a lot of these, these younger players on your roster. And now that you're, you know, to this window and to this point where you're not really in, con you know, in contention for the Big 12 title game, yeah. you know, it opens a door for for some more of this, I would think. Uh, again, not at the expense of winning, though. Not at the expense of winning. Uh, Chris, before we get out of here, I don't know if this requires a uh, tinfoil ball cap or not, but I'm curious <laughs> you've, if you've picked up on a theme in the Big 12 conference uh, leaving the weekend. First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle all the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can bet only $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL and a whole lot more 
all in one place. So when you get a hunch, a gut instinct in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more all on the same page where you place your bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a gut feeling again and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I'm curious if you've, if you've picked up on a theme in the Big 12 Conference uh, leaving the weekend. And it did involve a, a ball game that was under this kind of spotlight uh, that we covered between Tech and Colorado, but also involved uh, a ball game in Salt Lake City between the Utes and uh, BYU. And it was a spotlight shown on Big 12 officiating, which has now made its way to uh, national headlines here or there, mostly because of a Utah athletics director that was really enjoying the high balls or something. He's like, yeah, I'll go out. I'll, y'all want me to say something? I'll go out. I'll say something. I feel like his buddies were egging him on in the suite or something. Like, man, you need to go. <laughs> He's like, I'll say it. Then maybe the next day you're thinking, all right, last time I'm listening to you guys, I probably shouldn't have said that. But uh, <laughs> the Big 12 narrative, the Rig 12 narrative, whatever you want to call it, uh, this week, I don't feel like it's really been all that kind. I hate to see it for the conference, but also I guess would just defer to you uh, to feel the same way that I do in that it ain't the first rodeo as far as this kind of narrative. I mean, pick your conference commissioner, pick your prior era. <laughs> I feel like we've heard things like this all along. Maybe it's just part of college football. I don't know. What's well, a loaded question here, man? Um I have a lot to say. I don't even know if I asked you a question. You don't have to give a statement. I'm I have, just wondering about you picking up on uh, – I have a lot to say. You've covered I'll this league for a long time. I'll try to be brief. <laughs> one, I may, I may go to like five or six here, but we'll just start with number one. Number one, Utah, if you don't want to be in this league, kick rocks, man. Like, you you, you got a soft place to land. You, you're not doing anybody any favors. I mean – Sorry, you know, you, you you had next to no offense in the latter part of that game. Uh, do I think there's some big picture narrative to screw Utah? No, um, I, I think that was uh, $40,000 poorly spent. Um, I think it was way more egregious in Lubbock, um, you know, like with the, you know, the roughing the passer and face masks and all, all those stuff. They're talking about some hold that may or may not have been a hold, whatever. <laughs> okay, so two. Um, do, do I do I think that there is conversations in the league office uh, about this? Doesn't even necessarily mean like this past Saturday or or this season, but just in the last 20, 20 something years that I've been doing this. Do I think they have conversations in the office? Hey. Take care of insert program here. No. Three, do I think certain programs benefit from their brand or benefit from their standing in the league race at times, or have they? 1,000%. Yeah, 1,000%. Um, it, it's basically like saying any, any, any sane, rational individual understands that when you go into like Allen Fieldhouse at Kansas – sometimes they get away with like capital murder and the officials are like, I know there's a head on the floor. I know there's a lot of blood and a knife and a gun and all that, but there was no murder you know, committed here. You know, I mean, that, that's just the reality of it. That, 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 that is a fact that happens. I mean, like Svi, Svi Mikhail Luke a couple years ago, he like basically at, at, uh, at half court, he picked up the ball and took like four steps without dribbling and went to the rim and laid it up and they win at the end over Kansas State. And there's no traveling call. I mean, it was just like by, you know, anyway, um, do, do I think uh, do I think this particular league title game, if it was BYU in Colorado, would that be the best thing for the league? Yeah, maybe. Did they intentionally – angle it that way i can't i can't say that but everybody that talks about this stuff and everybody from a rating standpoint everybody from a whatever metric you want to talk about would tell you oh 
that that would be a, quite the juicy game there. That would that would maybe give them the best chance for two teams in. That would give the best chance for whatever. It's checking every box. Um, <laughs> did 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 a crew in 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 uh, Salt Lake City or did a crew in Lubbock kind of have that in the back of their mind? I don't know. Do, do they feel? I mean, everybody knows the standings. Everybody knows this stuff. You're trying to please your bosses, right? I mean, who do these people work for? You know, so I don't know. Um, but you used to, I thought this was some of this was like crazy talk or like, but, you know, we, we all know Tim Donaghy, uh, the NBA official, you know, <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, they're, 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 some of this stuff is all, all way too real, you know. Um, uh, do, do I do I think Randy Cristal cheated back in the day? Damn right, I did. I, I, I thought he was either either that or he's just a terrible official. But no, no, no sane individual also can tell me that Texas and OU didn't benefit. And then and then the, the OU or the Texas fan are like, ah, we're just better than you are, or we are. You know, no. You, I think a lot of cases, you whether whether you do it on purpose or or just in passing, sometimes you do. You protect your brands. Okay. Uh, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear otherwise. Because I mean, I just there's way too much evidence uh, suggesting otherwise. So I don't know. I I don't know what your what's your opinion on, on all this stuff. I've kind of said uh, um, it's hard for me to believe that like a uh, an official is really going so far as um, say outright cheating, as in like he's covering for somebody play to play cognizantly. But I could absolutely buy into uh, guys playing into some teams more than others, whether it is a brand, which that would always be easy. Or it's something like what Colorado has, where uh, uh, they're the greatest show on on turf right now. So um, you want to buddy up to that? Yeah, I'd like. I want Dion to like me. Who don't want Dion Sanders to like him? Yeah, I'm going to be buddies with Shadur. Sure, I'll take care of you, buddy. I'll give you though. Whenever you got somebody coming up, <laughs> I don't. I mean, I can buy into that just because I think that would be more like human nature. Um, but we've definitely like Randy Crystal and some of these other guys that have come through over the years. We've definitely seen some wild stuff. So this ain't nothing new. It may sound a little bit louder um, because of the, I guess, obviously an athletics director's decision and then just the general sense that the other one uh, involved a team coached by Deion Sanders. So probably going to get a lot more attention uh, just over this the course of this week than maybe some others did. But th this is not a new phenomenon in the conference. So I hope that I'm not just naive to not think that they're just up there scheming and yeah, I <laughs> like think there's way more breaking rules, but there's way more, uh, in my opinion, by a lot, way more incompetence than there is <laughs> like trying to steer steer the game a direction to, to get to, to get a result. I, I, I would I think that's yeah. a very fair sure. um, another human nature phenomenon, because I still can't tell you week to week in this league what what targeting is. I can't well now and now I can't tell you what roughing the passer is. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of subjective calls that I'm just like, <clears throat> why is it different this week than it was last? And and people may not even know who we're even talking about. When we mentioned Randy Cristal. He think he's since retired, uh, but he, he was. Uh, I want to say wasn't wasn't he not the one in Austin where Mike Leach went to the locker room and was like on his flip phone at halftime trying to call the big 12 office to complain. <laughs> and then, and then, and then after the game, it was like, wasn't that the chicken or the egg, you know, like what, which comes first here? You know, I, I think, I think I'm, yeah. he was the <clears throat> head official head official in question there. And he got, so, run -ins. he got so flustered that he couldn't really talk correctly. Like when he was talking over the mic, because he was so angry, which um, officials are, that's part of their training is like, you're supposed to be, you know, even keel, and you got to get is. yelled. You, you got to get yelled at. You can't really yell back. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, anybody. You know, uh, even Ray Charles could have seen the face mask penalties uh, that happened <laughs> on on Saturday. I would have thought, but uh, Ray obviously wasn't working for the the crew in, in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, but yeah, I, I just. Uh, of all the of all the the schools, I want to hear this from Utah ain't one of them, man. You, you, you're one in five in the league. You're not doing anybody any favors by being here. If you don't like it, kick rocks. I like that initial message you started out with. I definitely wanted to uh, echo my sentiments in favor of that. Um, and Colorado, I mean, they had one of those firsthand experiences, right, in the history of their program, weren't they? In the uh, fifth down ball game, wasn't that a Colorado game? In Missouri. Yeah, isn't that right? Uh -huh. 
Yeah. <laughs> Once a, yeah. To just show you that things uh, can get a little fuzzy uh, between the lines for those guys. But if uh, but if I was playing if I was playing BYU and and Colorado in these last couple of games, I don't mind saying it. I'm not out of bounds and saying it all. I think you'll have to overcome more than just beating them. I think totally. that's very I think that's very fair. Um, <laughs> just the way it is. Sorry. Look out. <laughs> Be prepared. <laughs> yeah. And I and I, and at this point, I wish I was. I wish I was BYU or Colorado with my position in the standings. I wish yeah, I was. Yeah, I want a ref yeah. to be my buddy too. Come on. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I can be. A, I can be fun. I can show you some fun places in the LBK after the game. Just come on. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, all right, Chris. I appreciate the time as always, man. We'll have a. I love a it. The Rig Twelve. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You, you need question to- mark. Question mark. It's a question. Put it's it on a question. shirt. Put it on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, appreciate your time as always, man. Enjoy the ball game. We'll get into uh, the result on the other side. So uh, we'll see you then. All right. Sounds good, man. Keep hope alive, everybody. We'll see you at the arena this evening. Get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. We appreciate you for being out there as always. For Chris, I'm Casey, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech. <laughs>